Brooks, love. Mm. Antidepressants. They say I won't feel the benefit for a couple of weeks. They make your mouth dry, though. And as for feeling drowsy, <laughs> especially this time in the afternoon. And can't you get any sleep if the baby's sleeping? She'll be awake any minute and won't feed him. Then there's her afternoon walk. <laughs> Michelle'll take her for you, but she's not got any dance on this afternoon. What, in about an hour's time? Yeah, that should be all right. Then you can get some rest. Oh, I love that. would be great. I pick on Bob, you know, when I'm tired. It's his birthday today. Not much fun, is it, coming home to a nagging housewife? Oh, I don't know. It's the sort of mood I'm in. I mean, is it me, or do you think this room looks dingy? It needs doing up. Well, that's what I think. It's one of the things I keep nagging about, but Bobby won't budge. But it'd cheer you up, wouldn't it, if the room looked nicer? Oh, love. Try telling that to him. Tell you what, direct action's what you want. But if you start stripping the wallpaper off, well, then he's forced to do the rest, isn't he? Well, knowing him, he'll probably leave it. Then it'll be even more depressing. Do you want me to start here? Yeah or no? Go on, then. I can always blame you. <laughs> Shelve everything. Shelve everything for six weeks. Hold off the contractors. Let us examine all the options. Other than calling the men out. Call them out now and they won't come. We both know that. We've both canvassed opinion. Is that the root of your proposal? Oh, they might feel like that now at the prospect and not the reality. But how do you think they're going to feel when the redundancy notices go out, eh? Or when Peterson gets at them? He can turn them, you know. He could lead them off a cliff and they'd follow him. I mean, what makes you think you can contain him? I'm not so sure we can. Six weeks' time or now, what's the difference? And as far as he's a problem, Peterson doesn't melt away. Six weeks gives us a chance to sort him out. To show him the subtleties. I mean, if you're going to force this through, we don't intend to come out of this with nothing. Oh, I've always seen some tie-up with more money. But what do we gain, apart from a vague promise that you can muzzle Peterson? Enlightens the word I'd have used. What does it give me, Mr. Grant? Time. Time to line up your troops, get the board behind you. They are behind me. Unanimously, to a man. No one waiting to plunge the knife in if things foul up a bit. Well, there's a meeting later this afternoon. A lot to get through, though. Issues I wish to raise besides this one. Yeah, well, raise this one for me, eh? Seeing as it's my birthday. Oh, congratulations. You do realise that if we grant this favour, I shall use the time to strengthen my position. No U-turns, if that's what you're expecting. Same here. But, Terry, you'd no right to say I'd do it. Not unless you ask me first. Hey, I told you once. Oh, but it's only taking the baby for the walk. Yeah, well, I promised to do Jackie's hair for her. Go oh, ask Marie. Oh, Sheila mightn't be too keen. I wish I'd never offered now. Well, can't you take her? Well, I would, but I've got to go and pick a car up. And if you're late, they slag you off. Because it's like a bad start to a job. What time have you got to be there? Not till half four, but it's in town. Oh, well, you can manage a short walk. Take them two beggars with you. They're bored, Marie. That's why they play you up. It's not my fault they got themselves suspended from school. And they play me up because George isn't here and they think they can get away with it. Yeah, well, maybe if we went for a short walk. Well, I don't think she can expect any more. Terry said she'd been poorly. Yeah, well, some of us can't afford to crack off. I mean, what would happen if we did? It's not that simple, is it, though? Hey, come on, you two. You're going out with Terry. Oh, give me strength. You should be far more with them. Me? Yeah. They're no softy when they see one. It isn't that. Why should I? I mean, it'd be different if they were mine. You must be joking. There is another way, though. They come to us cap in hand, asking us favours, admitting the basic weakness of their case. But if we grant the favour now, don't we have that over them? A lever we might use later on? Mm, no, Paul, let me finish. I know I've urged caution before, but maybe this is it. Maybe now is the time to act. Put in the new crews by the end of next week, before they know what's hit them. But that just fuels Peterson. Is he such a threat? I'm not at all convinced. Maybe Paul isn't either. That was the root of it, Paul. Last-minute doubts about the whole damn project. No, Nigel, not at all. 
We benefit from the breathing space. We need the time. Need it for what? We want to change the system and keep the union with us. Now, as I've said before, the key to a successful change is the financial deal that we can offer them. We need time to set that up correctly. In addition, there are one or two things concerning Woodward and Lynch that worry me even at this stage. Right. Yeah. There's this the tender you accepted. Please. Six weeks gives me a chance to get back at them. Take them up on these extra charges. Lick them into shape, so to speak, before the battle starts. Peterson has more chance of winning hearts if we rush in next week. They'll see it as something underhand. The haste will be resented. Haste. That thing been dragging on for weeks. Well, maybe it could drag on a little longer. Come around to my view, then. Mm, maybe. But don't be too smug about it. <laughs> Oh, not now. Why not? We've got our money. Because I've got to go to town, that's why not. And I've got to get this baby back home. We'll take her back. We'll be all right. You get the bus from here and you'll be quicker. Oh, all right. One in the shop and one stays out here. You don't leave her on her own. No. And no messing about. All right. Uh, we're doing you a favour. Oh. Here you well, that's between the bogeys. You first, and then swap over. Thanks. Right, yeah. see ya. See ya. What you want? Went to the front. I couldn't make you hear. Well, you couldn't have banged very loud. No, I didn't. Steve, Steve Wax, you must be Marie. From Walton. I'm a friend of George, cellmate. Well, I was. He never said he shared with any Steve. Yeah, before he went to Haverig. Then, when he come back in Walton, like, he come on to our landing and I got out this morning, so he said to come. What for? Well, talk about how he was. I mean, he says it's hard in visits to give you a true picture. And he told me to bring you something. So they're only chocolates, but with you having the lads. What are their names? Gary and little George. He warned me you might ask me that. He said, you'd know it was a special question. <laughs> Lost in me, that. Still, Spoosh, you understand? Yeah, I do. Well, I suppose if you just come out today, you deserve a cup of tea. She just wouldn't be mad at us. No, she'd be mad at Terry as well. And then Terry would be mad at us. So we'd end up coughing for her twice. Karen. What do you do sometimes? Is the Jackson? Oh, my face was numb for hours. Well, I got me to work. I've done enough work anyway. Mm. Hey, I hope you don't mind me um, meeting you. Why should I? 
we just took your baby for a walk, only we didn't knock your mum up. Yeah, in case she was asleep. It's all nice. I'll put her in the back garden. I fetched her a woolly ball on a string. I'll put her up on the line so she can do a swiping. The trial was going quite well, you see, until they asked him the name of the twins. He didn't know. So, although he was a good friend to George, and well, he thought the world of him, it did the case more harm than good. It's like there was nobody close to speak up for him. I would. Not that they'd ever ask me all my convictions. Still, I would do, definitely. Is he well thought of, then? You know, like on your landing, for instance. Well, he was kind to me because I had bad news. And he wrote a letter for me. Like, I've not had much of an education. But what's the feeling generally like? Well, it's not very good. Oh? Well, they think he's done the whole thing wrong. I mean, everything he's done is wrong. Fighting and fussing over things, then half a rig going over the wall. Well, don't they admire him for that? I mean, I think he took a lot of courage. It's like, with me, there's no grey matter anyway. But George has got it, hasn't he? Only he doesn't use it. You mean they think he's a fool? W ones like me, we'd always go to George once they get picked on leg. And Trev, who's in the hospital a lot. What's wrong with him? Another at the ball. Yeah. There's things he'll only tell to George. I see. So most of them think he's a fool. And the rest that are especially thick all round the bend think he's a saint. Well, thanks for nothing. See them kids out there? They're his sons. They're still proud of their father, and so am I. We still respect him, even if you don't. So if you said you peace, get out. Well, I have to go now, any road. Because I haven't found anywhere yet for tonight. To sleep. To go. Don't know why you bothered coming round here anyway. Well, otherwise, I just wander around. It's like... You lost your first day out, and there's no lock-up time, no end to the day, except the dark. He asked me, and I said I'd come because I'd have something to do. Don't you have any home? My mum had enough of me years ago. You know, with having the busies round and never being anything but bother. Nobody's that pathetic. I mean, you must have had some chance to make a life for yourself. Well, when I got married, that was OK. We had a council flat. What I robbed, it was just for the home, you know, to keep it looking nice. I had a packing job. My card was all stamped up. My mates were great. But there you are. You got nicked, I suppose. She said she'd wait. But then she wrote asking about a divorce. George told me what to say. Well. First he did a dummy like, then I copied it out. He's got his burdens and all, you know. A man that's wrongfully accused. A wife, two kids. You! Who cares whether you're in or out? Well, Father McDonough's been good in the past. I might go and see him. My husband's got enough on his place. He's got another 12 months to face in there. He doesn't need to hear sob stuff from the likes of you. It's not fair on him. He says he'll be all right. He says it's known that you're there. And I wasn't to be put off marriage because once it had been the making of him, and now it'd be the saving of him. Cut it by heart. He said those words so much. Well, don't sleep out tonight. If this. Priest can't put you up, then come back here. But only if you're desperate. Thanks. On the floor. And I'm not on my own in this house, so no daft ideas. You see, I'm not like George, not one bit. I'm saying this because it's what he'd say. You never tell me where you went. No, it was special. It was a hand party. You know, we talked about boring and feminist issues. Like? Like fellas. Mum, and you best wake her up. She won't sleep tonight. I'll go and check it. Change the subject. I didn't. Well, what about tomorrow? You know I'll have to take it. Andrew, I'm not going to this concert. We won't be back late, honest. 
If I start the week behind, I never catch up, do I? You just don't want to go, that's all, isn't it? Quite right, I don't want to go. And you should know me by now. The more you nag, the more I hate it. You know, I really dislike you sometimes. Well, perhaps you ought to dislike me a bit more. Then maybe you'd leave me alone. Karen, did the twins say anything to you when they brought the baby back? Not particularly, no. She's got a whacking great scratch down her face. I didn't say. She was down in the blankets. Well, I'm going round to have a word. Hey, could the cat have done it out the oh, back? Oh, she'd have woken up screaming. Well, wait till me dad gets her. Karen, she's marked all over her face. It's appalling. Well, don't go looking for a fight. Tell your dad when he gets in. All right, I'll come with you. No. I'm all right. I won't rant and rave. I'm not tearing my hair out. <sighs> ah, there you are. I can never find you when I want you. <laughs> I'm so damn busy with this crusade. Well, if the plant has suffered because of me, which I doubt, I now have six whole weeks to put it right. Quite a relief, given all the worry over Gordon. Ah, yes, that's exactly why I'm looking for you. Claire just phoned me up. Could I bring you to supper tomorrow night? I think you might be wasting away. Oh, that's kind of her. Well, patently, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm cooking myself tomorrow night. Favour for Annabelle. She wasn't able to fill all her commitments for catering, you know. <laughs> well, maybe you should go to France and join her. I'd like to. Hardly an ideal time, though. While the cat's away. Well, you've nothing to fear from me. Oh, you've opposed me every step. Oh, yes, but openly. Besides, I've also lost hands down. No, it's not me you should fear. I'm very little standing at the moment. Ah, David? Yes. Well, I've had nothing but support from him. And what's more, given the scheme working here, I can even see him extending it to the main factory. Oh, yes, I'm sure you're right. You're the experiment. And if it fails... I carry the cam. Well, don't you ever feel you're being manoeuvred? I mean, if your head were to roll, well, uh, no great shakes finding someone new in this place. The head's grey anyway. I take your point. Well, hardly mine. Oh, your thought, then. Thanks, Nigel. You really do bring sweetness and joy. Look, she's not saying, did you hurt the baby? She's saying, did you leave her at all? Outside the shops. We never. Look, I'm only trying to find out what happened. She's not saying it's a bad thing to leave babies outside the shops. I mean, sometimes you'd have to, don't you? We weren't at the shops. And you never left her on her own at all. Marie, there's a man outside. He said you said he could stop the night. Yeah, let him in, will you? He looks dead scruffy, though. Just do it, Michelle. I'll explain later. Well, why won't he look you in the face? Michelle, I'm up to my eyes in it here. These kids are getting a taste of their father's medicine. What's that supposed to mean? Go on upstairs, you two. Get washed, get ready for your tea. And, Michelle, don't argue, just let him in. She always questions everything I say. Are you going to answer me? You're making an accusation against my kids, and I don't think it's justified. No! We take the baby out for a walk, and she comes back in that state. If it happened while they were out, they would have told you, wouldn't they? Oh, do they always tell you everything they do? Like what they do at school, for instance. Yeah, I know. They've been suspended for defending the father. What's wrong with that? Except they picked on their own boy. Just keep out of this, Michelle. Well, don't go making them out that they're heroes, cos they're not. It's not an easy thing for them, you know. He was up in Haverig, then down here, and now they find out he's been sent to Leeds. They worry. They're confused. Yeah, lie the way out of trouble, it's possible. Don't explain my kids to me. Look, the father's away. They're out of control. Oh, and you'd know a lot about controlling kids, would you? What a fantastic job you made of your Barry. What happened to your precious firstborn, eh? What went wrong there? He's all right. He's always been all right. It's the people he destroyed along the way. Well, I hope you don't do the same thing with your little girl, or I feel sorry for her. That was quick. What happened to your friend, the priest? He's gone. He moved to another parish. I thought, if he'd let me stay the night... Do you see what it does to families, getting in prison? You should think twice next time. Pressing? Oh, well, that's great, that is. I know. My wife... I told you. Oh, for God's sake, put them things down. Michelle, get the tea started. I'm gonna go up and see the kids. Well, you better make sure your handbag's locked away. I will, and you and Terry will be upstairs, and he knows that we know who he is. 
suppose you know George. Yeah. Is he a friend? He's my brother-in-law. And I think Marie wants her bumps feeling letting you in the house. But then it is her house and there's nothing I can do. Present? Yeah. Who from? Hey, someone in work. Thinks we should move on from page three to higher things. The People's War by Angus Calder. That's how the war really was. You know, to the people who fought it. Anyway, how are you feeling? Angry. Upset. Wasn't from Janet by any chance, was it? Oh, blimey, you're giving enough clues, didn't I, she? Yeah. I wondered why she suddenly just vanished out of your conversation. Do you blame me for staring clear, see, the way it sets you off? I wonder why it does. I mean, could it be the way she buys your books, you know, clever clog books? The sort you can talk about, you know, over a quiet drink, perhaps? Oh, behave, will you, she? It's you who should behave. Hey, shut up, will you? Andrew and Karen's downstairs. Well, let them hear. A bit of truth never hurt. Truth? Oh, it's truth you want, is it? Well, I'll tell you why I never mentioned Janet, shall I? Because when I spoke to your doctor last week, he said a woman in your state of mind often has obsessive thoughts, and he told me to stay clear of anything you might be obsessed about. I see. So your interest in Janet is something that doesn't exist. I'm not, so I made it up. Did I make up the mark on my daughter's face as well? Sheila, you're on tablets, aren't you? And they affect you because you haven't adjusted to it yet. Now, I know the baby's face was marked, but if them kids over there plead ignorance, it doesn't mean that they're guilty, does it? I mean, if you're half doped all the time, maybe you didn't notice, or maybe it happened by accident. I might have done it myself, you mean? Go on, love. You're halfway there. Why not go the whole hog? Yeah, well, you're on dodgy ground here, aren't you? I am what? Listen, I've seen you shaking that pram. And I tell you what, my blood grows cold. Because you're beside yourself with temper, aren't you, like? And I come home from work one night, the baby's missing. She was being minded. You didn't know where she was, did you? Hey? And if that baby hadn't come back... I wouldn't have cared. Is that what you're going to say? The cat fits. Look, she, I don't know what's happening. But you're not yourself, are you? I mean, you're not even reasonable. You won't even discuss things. I mean, take the decorating, for instance. I come home from work and half of it's ripped off the wall. I mean, what did you do that with, girl? Your bare hands. Yes. If that's what you want to believe. Think what you like. I made this up. Disfigured my own child. There's a birthday cake downstairs. I hope it chokes you. Go upstairs and tell Terry. You know, I don't like going in there. 
Teddy? Michelle? Oh, Paul. Oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I, I thought you'd be up and off very soon. I didn't want to miss you. Oh, I'm going in later on this morning. Ah, uh, supper invitation for tonight. Good wine, conversation. Your own company getting too much for you? No, I should explain. I have this gourmet meal to prepare, which Annabelle would have prepared, of course, where she... Oh, I understand the business. Yes. I wondered if you'd see your way to assisting me first part of the evening and uh, dining with me afterwards. Oh, I see. If it appealed, and you were free, of course, I realize you've a lot more social life than might previously have been. At least, you know. Yes. Probably, on balance. Not too keen on the idea? Well, will you be able to manage by yourself? I <laughs> shouldn't think so for a minute. Well, in that case, I'll help you. Oh. Just this once. Oh, well, there's a, only going to be this once. Uh, well, pop across when you're ready. There'll be a cup of coffee. We'll map out a plan of campaign. Could he have missed this? But silver, no chance. So why did he take it, then? Because he was soft, that's why. Doesn't make sense to me. Come on, you two, get some breakfast down here. It's not your fault, I've got no fight with you. But whatever possessed you, though? I mean, you must have known it was a risk. I knew all right. Yeah, well, so did I, really. It was some daft thing he let slip about George. Something that George had said about our marriage. Well, it touched me, so I let him stay. Can't afford to have feelings in this life, can you? Look where it bloody gets you. Well, like you say, he's traceable, so she'll be dead easy. Why didn't he think of that? He wants to go back inside. It's the only life he knows. Tell you what, though. Doesn't half make me fear for George. Another 12 months of that. What's he gonna come out like, he? Eh? No pride, no dignity. If he wanted to, he could learn to be dishonest. Best school for robbers that there is. All the same, he shouldn't get away with it. Nah, put it down to experience. It's probably fate he left me this. Might bring us some luck. We've just got to survive, that's all. Try and give George a bit of pride. If not in himself, at least in us. Face up to things, be honest. Give him nothing to grieve over. That's all we can do, really. We can't. We can't. What's going on? We're just having an argument. What about? What you just said about being honest. Well? About yesterday with the scratch on the baby's face. Oh, God, that's all I need. So why can't you do your revision here? Because it's easier with somebody. And I won't be late. I'll be back about ten-ish. Mm. So what do you need a glad rag oh, for? Oh, because we might get off for a bit after we finish. Ta. Hey, kid. Here I am. I've got everything you can ask for. I've got extra beans, by the way. They were down this week. Mm. Shall I unpack it for you, kid? No, you're all right. I'll do it. You get off. Where's my second favourite girlfriend? She's upstairs with our Damon. She's having a kick on the mat while he does his press-ups. He's taken to her now, Damon, hasn't he? As opposed to me, you mean? Look, it's an illness, love. There's no blame attached. Oh, really? That's not what you were saying yesterday, love. You could have fooled me. Look, I said I was sorry, didn't I? And accused him over the wallpaper. And I wasn't to know it was Terry, was I? No, you never even asked. Look, Shane. What I said last night, love, about you getting away for the rest, taking the baby with you, you know. Make a nice change, love. It'll give you a bit of peace and quiet. Those sort of things need organising. Well, what is there to organise, love? They're coming up here for the Christ, and aren't they? They've offered and they've got a car. All you've got to do, love, is bung a few things in the back of the car. Yeah, well, what about the journey back? Well, I'll come down and collect you, won't I? We could make a nice weekend of it, eh? Why not? Oh, I don't know. It seems an effort. Everything seems an effort. Go on, you get off. I'll sort this out. I only want a bit of a cuddle, you know, love. I'm not trying to rape you. I know. I know! Well, you want to think what this is doing to me, you know? I mean, this is no picnic for me. Setting on eggs, I don't know what to do to please you. Look, it's just that I can't cope yet. I don't expect you to, love. I understand. The doctors told me this is part of you being poorly. Well, you seem to have had quite a chat. Yeah. Well, we think it was important.
I haven't come to pick a fight. It's about the twins. Okay. All right. Well, Look, I know you're busy with your chores, but I've got to have a word. Go on. You go. I'll be all right. I phone you from the office. Well. Deacon Matthews told me to get lost because he knew the lass was asking questions, digging her own. Well, it's her job, isn't it? If she wants to go from behind her desk, good luck to her, I see. And now she's gone. Through Matthews. Why don't you dislike him, Archie? Why? Because he belongs to a certain breed that I've met many times. Puffed up they are, like great, fat, shiny balloons. And what must the rest of the world do? Make them feel good, make them feel important. Well, I know he must be a very able man, or you wouldn't have put him where he is. No need to lick my boots. All right. He could be a no mark at that job. He's clever enough to use another person to cushion him against being found out. He's in with Pollock, for instance. Well, it's likely to be friends, chief accountant, financial director. And he certainly doesn't have everyone in his pocket. Roy Gilchrist, head of sales, he doesn't like Matthews much. Ah, well, that's another thing that's changed. They were in the pub the other day, and that's the first time I've seen that. But he did fall out with Miss Havisham. He wasn't the turn on he wanted to be, and <laughs> she let him know in no uncertain terms. So he makes out she's carrying on with her counting Harrison. And that's a slander, definitely, because I have more chance than him. Chase it up then, shall I? To please me. I am sorry the twins felt they had to lie. Still, accidents will happen, won't they? Yeah, but it happened to Gary and little George. I would say, yeah. Uh, this close. I've got to hate her. Well, brought us nothing but trouble. We were never made welcome, were we? No. We should have stopped on our old estate. Greed, I suppose. Me wanting a posh house. Wanting to better ourselves. Oh, God, that's a laugh. It's not really about the twins, though, is it? Woke up this morning to find we'd been robbed. Me playing the Good Samaritan. Giving an ex-con a bed for the night. Just goes to show, doesn't it? Oh, it's this close. It's a bloody jinx. Did I hear you say that George was being moved? To Leeds. Thought maybe I should just up and go there. You know, set up there somehow, near to where he is. I'm not that close to Michelle. There's only George. When he was in Walton, well, didn't seem that far sometimes. I'd even say good night. I'm thinking of a move myself. Well, in my case, only for a while. I haven't made a very good start with Madam up there. Bob thinks a change is seen, you know, not so many demands. We were good as a family. Well, I think we were. I just wish I didn't keep thinking it was gone. Forever. You'll come out. You'll start again. Somewhere else, though. Yeah, we'll move. I won't be leaving many friends. Some people will leave a sigh of relief. Hey, Sheila. You just say meatballs. Meatballs with aubergines. They must have soaked up half a can of oil. Oh, I agree. We could have gone down the wimpy and bought up a job lot. They'd never have known the difference. <laughs> oh, Lord, I've got to take this seriously. If only for Annabelle's sake. Right. You ready for frying soon? Uh, one sec. Wash hands in order to shape balls. Sorry. You were saying? 
that really depresses me about my situation is the attitude of my firm. I mean, I was ready to stand up for myself, but the person who really silenced me was my own boss. And what's more, she's a woman. Well, I can't say that's relevant. <laughs> the reason they dreamed up for my removal was that I was thought to be carrying on with one of the nice, wholesome young men. Uh, dry hands. Uh, were you? No. And even if I was, so what? I go away to an audit, get chuffed up by the men. Do they get drawn over the coals for it? No. But I get taken off the job. But you say that was only an excuse. The very fact they can use it as an excuse, that it's in their minds to. Should have made Joyce leap to my defence. Try frying a few meatballs for a change. Take your mind off things for a bit. Yes, well, they do vary, rather. <laughs> Oh, if they turn out of bad shape or fall apart in the cooking, we'll dine on them afterwards. Don't be too fussy, Paul. I'm not Annabelle, you know. <laughs> I felt I had no choice, Michelle. It's like... like for months and months these things have been happening to me. Little George nearly losing his eye. Then letters coming through the post. And I've had to sit back and take her. Now they're moving George to Leeds. Well, I am not going to sit back. We'll go as well. But you won't get to see him any more often if you move down there, you know. I mean, they're not going to give you any more visiting orders. I'm sorry. I rung the estate agent this afternoon while you were out. I'm going to sell the house. But you're leaving us without a home, and I just don't see the point. Michelle, we've not thought about it yet. We've got some income, haven't we? So we'll find somewhere. And it won't be overnight. Because, being realistic, this place won't sell overnight. Heather had a problem over hers. And until it's sold, you simply pay me rent. And with your rent, I'll rent somewhere in Leeds. Sounds charming. For you. Well, if it doesn't suit Michelle, I'm sorry. But I've spent enough of my life suiting you. Marie, we had the flat. I moved back here to keep you company when George was put away. And you stayed here when Celia chucked you out of the flat. Yeah, but I've not been fit. That's why we've not considered moving on, setting up somewhere else. Is it? Well, maybe. But perhaps that's not the only reason. You mean it was cheaper? Oh, I don't just mean that. I think I've kept you two together, in a way. Well, me and what's happened and the kids. I sometimes think if you were on your own... Oh, anyway. It's been a long day. I'll be upstairs. Got to get the kids sorted, ready for bed. Would we have split up? I don't think we would have. Oh, we'll be all right. Oh, come on, Sheila. That it might never happen. Sheila, where's our can gone? She's round with her friends doing her own work. Probably Bernadette's. She'll be back about ten. Yeah, I told you she is working. She's on her own the corner at Bernadette's. If she's coming back at ten, maybe I could, um... Wait here. I'm sorry, lads. We've got the house for ourselves tonight for the change. But we will have when the baby goes down. And we like to keep our private affairs private. OK, well, tell her I called anyway. OK, son. You should have went to the concert, you know, lad. You shouldn't dance every time she calls the tune. She'll have no respect for you, you know. She's more important to me than any concert, Mr Grant. Good night, lad. Good night. The estate agents all right. Look, I told you we're going to be all right. Come on, I bought the cards and coke for the tea take. So they're really going, aren't they? Looks that way. Well, I'm glad you made up the differences between you two. What about between us? Come on, she. Say what you want to say. I will go down to Margaret's. For a bit, anyway. Just me and the baby. It's too easy here just to dump her and come and sort you lot out. Doesn't help me get to know her. And I know you've been very patient about 
You know. But it makes me feel guilty. That's a pressure in itself. Yeah, I'd go if I was you. I know I'm just a big gorilla. <laughs> so what's the difficulty? Can I go and not worry? What about Janice Hansen, you mean? Look, she... I've worked with Janet before and I'll work with her again. We're colleagues and we do get on well together. And I suppose there is a relationship there. But it's not the sort of relationship you think it is. Honest to God, love. OK. I'll leave you then. Be a devil, eh? I had a message you wanted to see me, Tom. I heard it was urgent. Yes, sit down, Dicker. Right. I'll come straight to the point. You're my chief accountant, so the review concerns you. I accept that. But when I find that the team leader on that review has suddenly been removed, she accompanies Mike Harrison for a drink. How can that possibly offend? How is that detrimental to her work? Ask Pollock. Don't pass the buck, Deacon. I'm asking you. She conducted herself in an unprofessional manner. And I gather, correct me if I'm wrong, she had the gall to turn you down. Yes. Well, that's a prerogative. That's neither here nor there. That's not why I objected to her. No? That would be unprofessional on my part. All right, Deacon, I won't keep you any longer. How are things going generally, do you think? No problems. None at all? Or do you mean none you can't deal with? Yes, I mean none I can't deal with. Where in particular? Sales. Roy Gilcrest ran across a minor hitch. He came to me. We've got it sorted now. I like to help out when I can. Feel that I've got everything in order. Well under control. Couldn't control Miss Havisham. Not very malleable, no. Good for her. That's all. Just thought it would have a word. Well. Our meal was a success. <laughs> One of the guests wants the recipe. <laughs> oh, don't wait for me. Have some more. Oh, no, I'm fine, thank you. I allowed myself several drinks at lunchtime with Stuart. How is your doctor friend? I mean, how's it going? Oh, he's a little bit too adoring at the moment for my taste. Too adoring? Can that be? Oh, yes. I don't think we ever really know what attracts one person to another. Or repels. So unpredictable. I think it's known as chemistry. Hmm. Is it Annabelle? Oh, no, no, no. Well, I'm thinking of joining her in France, as a matter of fact. Crisis at work blown over. Oh, no. We on to gather more when things are difficult. As they are now. No, it's... it's Gordon, Heather. It seems... Uh, it seems he's become involved with another young man. And that's something that's quite hard for... someone like me. My upbringing, my background. Well, I feel revulsion from it. Can't pretend otherwise. Still, he's my son. Is it likely it's a phase where he doesn't really know what he wants? Would that make it better? Worse, I should think. Poor Gordon. There you are. Even you say poor. Only because he must be very unhappy. I think he's been that for a long time. I don't think it's an easy age for anyone. Well, I'll go to France, see him, talk to him. Why? Are you ashamed of me or something? I just don't want to go up to the front door, that's all. No, 
have to say goodnight to you here then, won't I? I never said you couldn't. See ya. What time is this, Karen, love? It's not 11 yet. I know, but you said 10 o'clock, didn't you? And Andrew's been looking for you. Oh, well, um, you're getting to be a right drag, eh, is? Well, if you think that, love, why don't you tell him? I mean, don't be stringing him along for the fun of it. I thought we'd brought it up different than that. Who's that? Well, it's probably him. He's been out in the place. I can't be. Why not? It's a free country. Go and have a look. Him. Just riding around. Why? Well, he's just seen me walking up with another fella. Maybe that's all to the good. He'll know now, won't he? Walking? Are you sure that's all he's seen you doing, walking? Dad, it's someone a fancy. I'm only human. Oh, well, if you want to do the dirty on Andrew, love, that's up to you, isn't it? But if it's going to stop you getting the grades that you need, love, and that stops you going to university, well, that's something you're going to regret for the rest of your life. I mean, it's the long term against the short term, isn't it, love? You don't know what the short term is. I mean, I've only just met this fella, but it could turn out something that lasts. I know me and your mother have lasted, haven't we, love? But she's still wasted whole parts of her life, hasn't she? And she didn't have the chances you've had. You're all for women's rights now, aren't you? Karen, love. Don't make me feel ashamed of you in that way. I mean, I know there's another little one upstairs, love, but, well, she can never fill in for you, can she? Or make up for what I hope for you, you know? Don't let me down, eh? Not now. Hello? 229-1234. Nah, my dad's out at the moment. Uh, this is Neil. Uh, you are a resident of the house? Yeah. Yes, sir. British Telecom here, Neil. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're, we're doing a survey of this area. We're not buying anything if that's what you're about. Oh, no, no. We're uh, uh, quite the opposite, actually. 
Well, uh, since the privatisation of the telephone service, we've been looking at ways to reduce costs and increase profits for our shareholders. I think you'd better ring back when my dad's here. Oh, no, no, it's, it's quite all right. You really can help us. Well, the average length of cable from the phone to the wall is approximately two foot six inches. However, it has come to our attention that some of our subscribers have far more than this. Could you tell me the length of your cord, please? Fully stretched. <laughs> yes, yes, fully stretched. About four foot. Ah, uh, yes, that's just as we suspected. I'm afraid we're going to have to take one foot six back. But we've had this phone for years. Ah, uh, yes, that may well be. But we own it now, so if you'll just put the receiver down on the floor or anywhere where it's convenient, and we'll pull the extra cable back from our end. <laughs> Are you sure about this? Yes, look. Look, I'm in a bit of a hurry, so if you do it right away, I'll let you keep an extra six inches. How's that? I don't think it's right cutting back on us. Are your family shareholders? No. Well, I'm afraid we're well within our rights. <laughs> All right. I'm putting it down. Now. Fine, fine. Prepare for pullback. <laughs> Thanks. She's on her way. Oh, good. I don't want to take long over this. Well, she deserves an explanation. You can hardly tell her it's an April Fool's joke. Oh, come in. Cheer up. It might never happen. It has happened, Mr. Drucker. Well, if you mean being taken off the curse and review, I've, uh, I've got some good news for you. What's that? I'd like you to take it on again. It's what you want, isn't it, Heather? Well, yes, of course it is. I will be team leader, will I? Yes, just as before. Can I ask what's happened? You can. Well, if only human nature and behavior were as easily quantifiable as a balance sheet, but they're not. The main thing is, you're back where you want to be, and I'm sure you're going to make a first-class job of it. Well, I must get on now, Heather. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Drucker. Oh, oh you're going to have a bit of catching up to do, I'm afraid. Uh, you'd better arrange to see Joyce, and uh, she'll bring you up to date on the situation. Uh, just after lunch, Heather? Fine. I'll see you later. Mm -hmm. She's going to want to know why we've reversed our decision. And now our client doesn't want her to know. We have to honour that. May I ask why? Well, as long as it doesn't go any further. Well, it would appear that somebody at Curzon's took a shine to our Miss Havisham, uh, then took offence and uh, finally revenge for his rebuttal. He propositioned her? Well, that's rather a strong word for it. Uh, you, above all people, shouldn't sound so surprised. What a rat to jeopardise her career. Mm. Well, fortunately, Tom Curzon seems to be an honourable man. As soon as he found out the facts, he contacted me. Mm. Knight in shining armour. Uh, not the full suit. Just the helmet of Perseus. The helmet of Perseus? Greek mythology. It made the wearer invisible. As Tom Curzon wishes to remain, she must not know. All right. Well, hey, you all right? Yeah. Hey, there's a bloke looking for you. It could be bother. Who is it? I don't know, but our Ali said that somebody's been asking around. I thought it might be Mrs. Bancroft's old fella. Oh, beat it. You know, don't you? Only that there's a bloke looking for you. Me as well, but mainly you. You figured it out, and now you're just tying it on with me. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, British Telecom here, Neil. <laughs> April Fool. Was that you, Damon? Good one, wasn't it? How long did you wait for the cable to be pulled back? You got it. All right, I fell for it. Yeah, well, it's more original than saying that someone's after me. But that's right. 
Ah, uh, you'll just have to get your own back. But I didn't know it was you. She wouldn't tell her husband. How do you know? Who the fuck should let you do what you did? She's no right. She's every right. It's her house. And our home. But why does she want to move anyway? To help George, and I think it will. Well, she won't be able to see him any more often. They'll be closer. Or wouldn't you do it for me? Well, let's hope I never have to make that decision. That's not an answer. Richard said I might have some claim to the house. You what? You've been discussing our business with that third-rate Lionel Blair. It's a free country. I'll talk to who I want. Oh, during a slow waltz, was it? No, it was during a break in the class with more than a dozen girls there. But he just happens to take his breaks with you. Sometimes, yeah. All right, don't shout. I've got a headache. I thought you'd stopped having headaches. Well, I don't tell you everything. Well, you better not be here when our Marie gets back, then. Why not? Cos I don't think she's treating us right, and I'm gonna tell her. Oh, well, then that's all the more reason for me staying here. Hello. Uh, we're just going out. All right, well, you're off too, son. I'm just out. Well, don't go yet. I want you to try this coat on. Oh, Mum, you haven't brought me a new coat, have you? Oh, no, son, you show me the gratitude. Yeah, but I should be picking my own clothes. Yeah, well, this is for the christening, and I've picked it. Oh, hey, it suits you. What do you think, Neil? Smart, honest, Dame. Mm. Good. I want you looking your best for Father Daly. Oh, Mum. Well, he married me and your dad and he baptised you three. Now it's going to be four. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can we go now? Yeah. Are you all right? Yeah, why? Nothing worrying you, is there? No. Sure, you haven't seen me in a tie, have you, come in? Yeah, dressing table, my side. Oh, sure. Oh, I'll tell you what, you look really smart there, lad. Oh, so? <laughs> right, see you later, then. Eh, uh, can I keep this on? Yeah, I'm glad you like it. Let's just take the label off, then. There you go. Stay out of mischief. Father Daly thinks we're a good Catholic family. <laughs> Let's hope he never finds out the truth. Go on, behave yourselves. Ta-da. See you, love. Bye. Big day soon, eh, babe? Talking to her and me? A wet in head, love, not yours. Bob, will you do something for me? Yeah, what is it? Can we just keep it as a religious ceremony? How do you mean? Well, I don't just want to come back from church, dump her in the pram and get the bottles out. Well, it won't be like that. Well, the others were. I know, well, people always expect a little something, love, don't they? Nothing big, like. I mean, I know how you feel, like. Well, can we just keep it at nothing except tea and sandwiches? And what's brought this on? Oh, I don't know. She just seems so innocent somehow. I'd like to keep it like that as long as possible. All right, she. Whatever you say. You should have said, I'm picking a car up this afternoon. I could have picked this up for you. Oh, it's all right. There's no weight in it. Borrowed it from Bessie. Where's our Michelle? Upstairs. So you're all ready for packing, then? Yeah, no point in hanging about now. My mind's made up. I'll take it if you want. Not in somebody's car that you're cleaning, you won't. I can pick an estate car up from a mate, no problem. Well, you're going to have your hands full. Thanks. I appreciate it. Have you thought where you're going to move to? Not really. I'm sorry about it, but it has to be this way. I understand. The estate agent will ring up before he brings anybody round. And that's it? What do you mean? Well, why can't you leave it for us to sell the house when we found somewhere? Well, that might take some time. You mean we've no incentive to throw ourselves out in the street? Something like that. Yeah, I think I'll go for that car. Are you coming with me, Michelle? I want to talk to our Marie. Oh, go with him. Let me pack in peace. Come on, get your coat on. See you later, eh?
George Jackson's innocent. You should get lessons from the old timers on how to do this. What's that? Now, hang about aimlessly on street corners. Don't talk so. What's up with you then? Look, who do you think this bloke is that's looking for us? You. And you as well. Your name was mentioned, so our Harry said. I wonder if they'll build more street corners as the unemployment figures go up. Look, did your Harry describe it? Just said he was a big bloke. I'm here some party here, you know. She had her way with me. All I wanted to do was sell her bin bags. Perhaps he'll understand if you explain that to him. You don't think I should go and see him, do you? No, I don't. Could you get in touch with her, see if she said out? Oh, God. I wish I'd never met her. Almost. Was it good, was it? Yeah, worth getting beat up for. No. I can't see her telling them, no, I just can't. Oh, yeah. Sex lessons given first, one free. Subtle as a burn entire that one. Are you Damon Grant, the bin bag seller? Uh, yeah. Who are you then? Dawn Finney. I don't know you, do I? Oh, you'll remember me though. Oh, yeah, why? <gasps> That's the why! back on the assignment? Yes, he seemed pleased as well. Does he know why I'm back? No. If you don't, why should he? Well, why shouldn't I? I can't tell you. Hello, can I speak to Don Summerhill, please? Heather Havisham. Hello, Don. Listen, I want to reorder the car. <laughs> Not as surprised as I am. Are you sure your Ali said it was a bloke that was looking for us? You? Yeah, was it a bloke? Yes, a big bloke. I still think it's Mr. Bancroft, because of his wife. No, 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 it's too much of a coincidence. Dawn Finney. It could have nothing to do with Mr. Bancroft. Maybe it was her idea of an April Fool. Look, Neil, people don't just come up to you in the street and say, are you Damon Grant and then wallop. It just doesn't happen. It happened to you. But no, it's an April Fool, that's what I'm saying. Could she be Mrs. Bancroft's daughter? No, Sharon's not that old. Oh, Sharon, is it? What do you expect me to call her? Don't suppose you could carry on calling Mrs. Bancroft. Not after you'd gone beyond the bin bag stage. She mentioned bin bags. She didn't have to think about them, did she? No, 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 not here. That Dawn Finney. She asked me if I sold bin bags. That must be what it's about. That may be her thing, but what about the bloke that's looking for you? Oh, God, yeah. I'll tell you something else and all. Oh. Your jacket's in a right state. Oh, God, my mum's gonna kill me. Looks like she'll have to join the queue. Come on. Where to? It's a fine dawn bone crusher finny. Yeah. You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. You looked up white. Yeah, I'll get in. Bingo. Does he know her then? Miss Darley knows everyone around here. And it's the only place you can get a pint of milk at three o'clock in the morning. Where'd she live then? Charmwood Street. But she hangs about near the wreck fields. Let's go there then. Not so quick. She give you that. Suppose she's got some mates with her. Look, I've got to find out why she gave me this. Your bottle hasn't gone, has it? Of course not. Good. Let's go before mine does.
You know why? Well, if I did, I wouldn't ask. I paid for that round, fair and square. And I'm not gonna let a divvy like you take it off me. I don't know what you're talking about. It's the only way I had of making a few bob. Soft lad. Eh, uh, we bought that round, me and him. Tell her, Neil. Yeah, we did. Who'd you buy it off? Eddie Eccleston. So did I. What a team you should be having a go at. How much did you pay for it? Fiver. I got it for four. So now what do we do, eh? Do what you want. I don't want it back. Well, hang on, Damon. Look, I'm not coming back there, and that's final. Eh, uh, have you been looking for me all day? Yeah, as soon as I found out who you were. Have you had anyone helping you? Our kid, till he went on afternoons at half one. Was he uh, a big bloke? Yeah. You'll sort Eddie Eccleston out if I ask him. Suit yourself. Is that it, then? Yeah, I'm just made up it wasn't Mr. Bancroft. Hey, Damon! What? Might see you round, eh? <laughs> <laughs> A drink. I'm all right. What's up? Well, we only had a blackout while he was driving. Oh, it wasn't as bad as that. You nearly crashed the car. No, I didn't. What happened? I just had a bad headache and I swerved the car a bit, that's all. That's all. Oh, I thought you'd got over your headaches. It's a bit late for you to be showing concern, isn't it? Oh, Michelle, don't go on. Leda, I want to know. You're throwing us out on the streets. It's probably the worry of it that's caused all this. Don't be stupid. I am not throwing you out anywhere. I've got to be near George. He needs me. You know I have to go. But why do you have to sell this place? Because I want a clean start. This place is full of unhappy memories, and you know it. I know I've come out worse in all this. You? What have you got to complain about? Plenty. You're going to end up with about 30,000 after this place is sold. Michelle, this isn't the time. All comes down to money, doesn't it? Well, if you want the facts and the figures, here they are. With the instalments from our Petra's estate, you're going to make more than this house is going to make. You're on seven and a half thousand a year for ten years, right? I don't get that. It's only what's mine. Because we agreed it. Well, somebody's told me I might have the right to this place. Hey, Danson's here. Oh. He's bound to know. You're going to get what's owed to you. Does that include the 2000 I lent you for George's legal costs? It's lent now, is it? Not family support. Michelle, let her keep it. You keep out of this. It's not your money. She doesn't mean it. Doesn't she? I brought her up. I've been a mother to her. She treats me like a bank manager treats a bad customer. We're all under a lot of strain. Well, I'm going to put an end to it. I am selling this house. I'm going to take George and the kids well away from here and start again. What are you doing? I'm sticking these little bits of paper back on the wall. I mean, what does it look like I'm doing? I told you I'll have that done before you get back from Basingstoke. Look, the baby's asleep. I felt like doing it, so why not? Because I don't feel like doing it, Shay. If you carry on doing it, you're going to make me feel guilty, so I'll have to get up and do it, won't I? No, you won't. I just want it decent for the christening, that's all. There's no chance of getting it done before then. I'm not saying there is, but we can do a bit more, can't we? There's no harm in that. Hey, Dad, you passed me on the road there. Sorry, son. Hey, what have you done to your face? Uh, there's a big scramble down the job centre. <laughs> what? Have you been fighting again? No, honest. You've been up to something. How did that happen? Just messed about down the playing fields. Oh, well, you're going to look a treat for the christening, you are. Damon, go and make a pot of tea, eh, son? See if you can manage that. Damon!
them now, save them for the journey. We never had Easter eggs for ages, Mum. Well, today's a bit special. Are we going to see me dad when we get there? Not today, but soon. What's it like in Leeds, Mum? It's the forests and rivers. Well, you'll see when you get there. Is it a big house? It is a big house, but we've just got a small room in it. Did he know that me dad's in prison? It doesn't matter what they know or what they think. We know he shouldn't be there, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. And when this house is sold and your dad's released, we're going to have a new house somewhere and start over again. We'd like to live by the seaside. Well, we might do that. Could we move to Australia? Would you like that? Yeah. Can we have new bikes to go with our new house, ma'am? Of course you can, love. Stopped at the service station for them. It's a long way. Come on, Mark. We cut it fine as it is. Damon. I'll get it. Hello, kids. Come in. Hello, Mark. <laughs> Yeah, like oh. Baby's here, don't see her. Isn't she a little smashy? Hiya. Hello, love. Do you have a good journey? Oh, walk back to seven all the way. I'd love to know what those motorway cafes are like inside. Oh, I'd like to know. Doesn't believe in stopping once he gets started. Hey, I thought you were taking to the toilet, dear. Oh, that's me forcing the baby on him. Damon, show him where it is, will you, love? Oh, Karen's in there. What, still? Will you tell her it's a baptism, not a fashion show, please? Come on, kids. Oh, isn't she lovely? Hey, what's your Damon been up to? Yeah, I was just going to ask that. It's right, eh? He done nearly fell over the stool. Oh, by the way, excuse the state of the place, eh? We were hoping to get it finished. What about his other one? A mystery, lad. Hey, she's a look of you, Bobby. <laughs> oh, don't say that, man. <laughs> what do you mean? She hasn't. She's the model of Karen that age. We never saw our Karen at that age. Well, I've seen pictures, haven't I? <laughs> I'll put the cap on. Good idea. Still fighting a good fight, Bobby. Uh, using the How are you, love? I like your hair. Thanks, love. I'm all right. How are you? I'm looking forward to you stopping with us. Are you sure you don't mind? Don't talk daft. Of course I don't. You helped Tony and the kids out when I was ill. So at least we can do a give you a little holiday. That's what sisters are for. <laughs> <laughs> can we go out, Mum? Last look around. Uh, yeah, all right. But don't get yourselves untidy. We'll be going soon. We won't. Anything I can do? How do you mean? Packing. Anything like that? It's all done. All that we're taking for now, anyway. You'll come back and see us. It won't be easy. Might be best we come and see you, then. If you like. Well, of course we do. You're the only family I've got. You wouldn't think so after all you've been saying. I shouldn't have said as much as I did about the money and that. No, you shouldn't. But it's Terry I feel sorry for, not myself. He doesn't know where he is with you. Maybe I don't know where I am with him. He's straightforward enough. Oh, I don't suppose I know what I want. That's the top and bottom of it. It's time you did. I'm gonna miss you, you know. I'm gonna miss you and all. you. Yeah, that's why I rang. Tomorrow night? Oh, I'd love to. Yeah, I really look forward to that. OK, bye-bye. What? <laughs> yes, a 7.30 appointment, Dr Griffiths. OK, I'll see you. Bye. Hello, 
Oh, I like your blouse, Karen. Oh, yeah, I'll get another one. Oh, Uncle Matty. <laughs> Hi, Dermot, lad. What's the other fella like? Oh, yeah, I, uh, over the stove. Hello, Matty, lad. I think you know Margaret and Tony, don't you? Hello oh, there. Hi. How are you keeping? I haven't seen you for a long time. This is Matthew. That's Helen. Hiya, Matt. Hello. Did you have a good journey coming up? Uh, not bad. Usual roadworks all the way up the M6. Not that it slowed him down. <laughs> anyway, we've got plenty of time to get to the church. You're all ready? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Matty, you and Theresa come with me, eh? Sheila, are you going with Margaret? Yeah. Kids, do you want to come with me or do you want to go with your mum and dad? You go with Karen. All right, Karen, look after the kids in our car, eh? <laughs> oh. Bob. Hello. Haven't you forgotten something, love? What? The baby. I think she's quite important in all this. <laughs> Are you keen to get going? In your own time. Are you sure you're up to it? Yeah. The Catholics give presents at Christmas. Yeah. I don't know. I've never been to one. I'll be downstairs. Give us a shout if there's anything you want. I don't think she really wants to go. Nobody's forcing her. Are you coming to Leeds with us? No. Why not? Because I don't think you're fit enough to drive that far. Oh, you scared in case I crash? Yeah. But it isn't the only reason. If I come with you, it looks as though I approve and I don't. Are you sure that's the only reason? What do you mean? When's your next dancing lesson? Don't start that again. It's the same night as usual, with all the usual gang of girls. Ask of God's church for Claire? Baptism. You have asked for your child to be baptized. In doing so, you're accepting the responsibility for training her in the practice of the faith. It will be your duty to bring her up to keep God's commandments as Jesus Christ taught us. By loving God and our neighbor, do you clearly understand what you're undertaking? We do. Are you ready to help the parents of this child in their duty as Christian parents? We are. Claire, the Christian community welcomes you with great joy. In its name, I claim you for Christ our Savior by the sign of his cross. I now trace the cross on your forehead and invite your parents and godparents to do the same. I just brought these round for Marie. Well, oh, you just missed her. She's gone to the trial to Betty and then she's going to Leeds. Oh, is she not coming back here? Yeah, they're going to pick me up in a couple of hours. Oh, well, I'll leave them then. No, give them to yourself. I told her to go around. Would you? Because I'd like to say goodbye to her. Can't seem to get going this morning. I think I'm going to miss her more than I thought. Is she doing some last minute visiting? Yeah, she's, uh, she's eating with Betty and Terry's calling on his dad. I wasn't going to go, but I changed my mind. That leads to me. 
sit down? I can't stop long. Oh, I'll just stay for a minute, can't you? Well, just a minute. I've got a joint in the oven. I'll have to get something started soon. Terrible if I pick up the paper first thing. Why don't you come and have lunch with me? I couldn't do that. Yeah, of course you could. There's plenty. But come on round. I've even got a bottle of wine. It's very tempting. Do you reject Satan, the father of sin and prince of darkness? I do. I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? I do. I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We proudly profess it. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on in. Hey. Hello there. Help yourself to a drink. Cheers. Cheers. Claire, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And so we welcome Claire Grant into our family. You are an unblemished soul, the personification of innocence. And it is the duty of all of us to guide and protect you from the evils of the world. She is now a Christian, and we must show her that it is not just for half an hour on a Sunday morning. True Christians don't mistreat their fellow man. They don't feast while others starve. They don't oppress the weak. In her lifetime, she'll come across cynics and skeptics who tell her it's the philosophy of the easily led simpleton, and possibly worse. But let us pray that she will have the strength to keep the faith. I married her father and mother and baptized her brothers and sister. And she is privileged to belong to a good family. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. I've never been to Leeds. I've only been once or twice. I haven't been anywhere, really. Oh, you must have been somewhere all your life. Nowhere exotic. <laughs> Leeds is hardly that. I've always fancied going to New York. Mm, me too. I might go one day. I will. That just sums up the difference between us. Sheila! <laughs> I won't keep you. It's all right. It's just that we're leaving today, me and the twins. Oh, we're off to Leeds. Well, I think if we're close to George, he won't do anything daft. Well, I hope not. I'm sure he won't, love. I hope everything works out for you. I'm going to make sure it does. Why is to Sunday any particular reason? I wanted to give you this for the baby, for Claire. I don't know if the occasion's right, but I wanted to talk. It's beautiful. Thanks. After all we've been through, I didn't want to leave. Well, you know, you know. I know. Great. Good luck, love. Thanks. I get the feeling you're sick of Terry. I don't know. We were all right before all this George and McArdle business. And I met this fella I quite like. Oh, that's it, is it? Well, I haven't been out with him or anything. It's just a good laugh. Mm -hmm. Where did you meet him? At dancing class. He calls himself Richard de Saville. 
calls himself. Well, it isn't his real name, but it doesn't matter. And Terry's name is Terry. That's it. Yeah. See, you understand. I just feel I want a bit more. There's nothing wrong with that, is there? Mm. No, it's best to find out before marriage, anyway. Oh, the grants are back. Do you wish them congratulations or anything? Don't know. Not into religion myself. No, neither am I. Where I come from, it doesn't exactly have a good track record. Get upstairs before your mother sees it. Come on, kids, get in here. Come on. All right, I'll give you something in a minute. Oh, she that. looks all tight. It's been a big day for her. No, me, no, Sheena. Oh, yeah, she does. She's <laughs> bound to take it out of her. It was a lovely service, Father, thanks. I was flattered to be asked. Easter Sunday as well, we are privileged. It is an appropriate day, a symbolic rebirth. Would you like a drink? Oh. Only tea or coffee, I'm afraid. Uh, I didn't want to have a party and dump her. Very thoughtful, not like the others. No. Sorry, there's no way. I'll uh, have tea, please. Don't oh. worry about it, Bobby. Not like the previous christenings, though. Hey. You make up for the time to swan, eh? Yes. Oh. Karen, get that one. Aren't you? You better come in. Can you come outside for a minute? No. I'm supposed to be helping me, Mum. You don't have to pee like that, you know. I'm not being like anything. I've asked you to come in, haven't I? I want to talk to you. Well, come in. I can't talk in there. Well, that's where I'm going. Who was he? A friend. I do have them, you know. Look, I want to know where to stand. Out there at the moment. Are you coming in? No. Right, then. mood now. Well, let's go to one then. Where? Oh, the road to the grants. Oh, we can't get crashed that. But what about all this go-for-it talk you were telling me? This isn't the attitude that's going to get you to New York, Heather Havisham. All right, well, we can't go empty-handed. I haven't even got a present for the baby. Well... You've got a bottle of wine, and Terry's got the best part of a bottle of whiskey next door. All right, why not? You'll have to excuse the state of the place, Father. We're in the middle of decorating. No job prospects at all, then? Not in painting, decorating. That's what I want to do. Just got one thing to say to you. Microelectronics. Sheila, I think she needs changing. <laughs> Hello. Hope you don't mind. Just wanted to say congratulations. Come on, get that spot we brought up. No, don't. We daft. It's what we brought it for. It's not what our Sheila wanted. If others are bringing booze in, where's the arm? <laughs> Talking about the glasses, aren't they? Don't you know anything? Yeah, I know you've got a big love bite on your neck. <laughs> Shut up. Why, everybody knows. No, they don't. Looks like you had a visit from Christopher Lee in the middle of the night. Who? Dracula. Oh, just shut up, Diane. Hey, Auntie Margaret noticed it when she admired your collar. Look, will you change the subject? And I reckon Andrew noticed it as well. Well, I bet that's the last we'll see of him. Stop going on about it. Because he didn't give you a big spammy, did he? Just mind your own business. <laughs> anyway, I even did give it you. I wasn't carrying anything. What are you talking about? Well, you can catch some very weird things these days. Oh, don't talk soft. It's true. I've read about that. AIDS. Hey, you don't want to be believing all that rubbish you're reading the paper, you know. But he's drawing blood, hasn't he? It can be very dangerous. Just take them in. You know, there's some people in America that will only kiss each other through cling film. Just think. You all right, she? It's not what I wanted. I know, love. But it would have looked strange if I'd have put the blocks on the booze, wouldn't it? Especially when they all arrived with their own. I know. 
I just didn't want it to be like the others. Not for her. Uh... Look, I'll have this place decorated when you get back from Basingstoke, hey? That should cheer you up a bit. <laughs> Simple as that. That's all I can think of for the moment. But if there is anything you want, she, you've only got to ask, you know. I know. It's nice, isn't it? A present for Claire. From Marie. That's good of it, isn't it? Especially after what you two have been through. Mm. Especially at Easter. Rebirth. A new start. Found all the winners yet, Edna? I want one beginning with D. Hey? No, D. It's got to spell Harold. I've got everything bar D. A six horse accumulator? Edna, you'll never get six winners. Well, you never know. Here are then. Discotech Sovereign. Well, I could run faster than that. Oh, hey, Edna, look. What? D Day Dodger. Where? Here, last race. Oh, D Day Dodger. I'll put it on for you, Billy Maxey. Eh? Oh, right. Way up. Hello, Harry. How's it going, then? <clears throat> Hello, love. Make you a cup of tea with it. I'm knackered. What are you two up to, then? Nothing. Oh. Pass the paper, will you, love? The paper? You don't want to be reading if you're tired, Harry. It's me legs that are tired. Give us the paper, will you? No, you're not going to be reading if you're tired. Here you are, Edna. Give us the blooming thing, will you? Hey, you look terrible. I'm fine. You look half dead. You're as white as a sheet. Am I? Like a ghost. Edna, bring this poor man a cup of tea. And a mirror. Morning. Morning. Oh. 
know you. Very much better, thank you. Hello, Mike. Hello. Now, do you need to fill me in on anything? No. Where are we up to, then? It's virtually finished. It's getting typed up tomorrow. Anything startling? No. Well, there should be. I want exact figures for the amount of faulty goods returned for every year since the company was founded, both in cash terms and as a percentage of turnover. Why? I just want them. It'll take time. I want them by lunchtime. Look, I have other things on my plate. Then get rid of them. I'm sorry, but I just can't drop everything because... I'm doing your company's review. Everything else pales into insignificance. Is that clear? For God's sake, what's got into you? Is that clear? Perfectly. Was that necessary? Is that the rough draft? Psychologically, of course, it makes sense. Does it? Yeah. There were crazy rumors about you and Mike. You want to squash the rumors? You squash Mike. Greg, you can't look at a woman without a twinkle in your eye. A pass is a reflex action to you. What's that got to do with it? And what does it get you? A pat on the back. Greg's a bit of a lad, nudge, nudge. I go out for a drink with Mike Harrison and I'm virtually suspended. Suspended because I'm a woman. Well, it's never going to happen again, and I don't care what I have to use to make sure that it doesn't. Is that clear? Perfectly. Non honor at the 3.30 Chepstow. Number nine, Madman McGregor does not... Hello, Ralph. Hello, Dean. Hello, Dean. The rest the same. That's hey, you're asking a lot, aren't you? Yeah, it's Edna's best. <laughs> best the British. Thanks. See ya. See ya. What is it? With Edna's. A one pound six horse accumulator. If I was not called that old by any chance, is he? He's a dodger. I'll still be running next Christmas Day. Deacon Matthew to see his power mad. Nothing would please him more than have one of the managers in his pocket. So? Well, who'd be the first to know that our stuff was being returned? Fifty to the dozen. Our sales manager. Aye, Roy Gilchrist. And he's too frightened to tell anybody. <laughs> But he knows that Deacon Matthews knows. I mean, Matthews only has to say the word. The sales man is in trouble. Matthews has him right where he wants him, on his knees. It's see part of the company home just for that. Well, he's just enjoying himself. You still haven't told anyone, Archie? No. Well, I did have a word with a big fella the other day, but uh, that wasn't what we talked about. Well, you should have told him there and then. I had the kind of feeling that you'd be back to do that. What did you talk about? You. What was said exactly? Oh, I'm not sure now. But, uh, maybe Matthew's name was mentioned. That's why I'm back, isn't it? Well, how should I know? Oh, come on, Archie. That's why I'm back, because Tom Carson intervened. Two of one, right, right. Our price. Five to one and eight to one. Oh. I'll put back. Oh. <laughs> What's the matter with you, woman? It's my nerves. Your nerves? I'm the one that's supposed to be sick. Three months, returns of the new product are up to 12% of turnover, compared with a trend of only 4% in the previous five years. That's a huge increase. Do you know why I'm back on this assignment, Greg? No. Probably because Tom Curzon insisted. Oh, I see. It's the Galahad rescuing the damsel in distress. I hope it doesn't affect your feminist principles. 
Sir Galahad usually got his due reward. <laughs> I'm sure he wouldn't say no. Well, I'm about to kick him in the teeth. Hmm? This new product of his. It's a disaster. The one he wanted to float the company on. And I'm the one who's going to have to tell him. Woman, what's the matter with you? Yeah, I told you it's my nerves. You've got mine shot to hell. Oh, get us a brush and shovel. I'm supposed to be sick. I'm supposed to look like a ghost. Oh. Got two more winners up. Seven to one and three to one. You've got one thousand seven hundred and twenty-eight pounds going on the last two. Oh my God. Look at the state here. You're going to have to tell him. I can't. He can't go on like this. What's going on here? Can you tell me what's the matter with her? She's got me going up the wall. She's got a sweat on, Harry. She's got a sweat on. I'm running a fever, running around after her, brushing up. She's had a bet. A bet? Yeah. Well, you scheming. What have I told you about betting, eh? She's got four winners up. I don't care how many winners she's got up. I'm blowing the face, telling her not to do it, and she goes and does it again. Listen, she got one thousand seven hundred and twenty-eight pounds going on the last two. I don't care how. How much? One thousand seven hundred and twenty-eight pounds. Have you got a chance? Can we talk? Yes. I'll um. I'll go and get a cup of tea, shall I? What they did to you was wrong. Thank you. I told them it was nothing, but... But they replied, well, you would say that, wouldn't you? It was no picnic for me, either. You weren't removed from your job. But I was blamed for your removal. Rule number one, Mike. Don't get involved with an auditor, no matter how... What? No matter how attractive she is. Forgive me if I don't thank you for the compliment. Anyway, I'm sorry it all happened. Yes, so am I. Shall I tell you the galling part? It was getting the blame without the guilt. And the guilt would have made the blame worthwhile. <laughs> For what it's worth, I value my job. Yep. Put him through. Hi, Don. How are you? Can you just hold on for a moment? Thank you. Was there anything else? Nothing. Sorry about that. And what price was that one, love? Yeah, thanks. Well? I don't have to tell you this. It lost. It won't end there. Five to one! Ah! Oh, 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 oh. No, you're wrong, Harry. I put it on in Billy Mac's shop, and he's got a £10,000 limit on winnings, and we're all without limit now, so we've won! Oh, 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 we've won! Okay. £500 on D-Day Dodger. I'll be with you now. D-Day Dodger. Yeah. You send me a nice fat check for the balance. Yeah. Hey, hello. Yeah. Well, you win some, you lose some, don't you? Are you sure there's something of this? Dead right, love. £10,000. Hey? What? Pound accumulator, ten thousand pounds. Oh, Edna's bet. Oh, Edna, is it? Hello, Edna, love. Hello. Come near often, does she? Oh, you must be Harold. Oh, she has mentioned me. Oh, loads of times. Hey, your bet's not over yet, you know. What do you mean? We've still got one to go yet, Pop. We've gone over the limit. We can't win anymore. That doesn't matter. The last horse has still got to win. Don't be soft. If we can't win any more money, why's the last horse got to win? 
your bet was a six-horse accumulator. Can't change your mind after only five horses I've ran. So we've got £10,000 going on a horse. And if it wins, we win nothing. And if it loses, we lose the lot. And they're off. Off to episode 433. Look, Pop, I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. Better start praying it wins. Strike him stiff in third. Right, no, all you are. The last one's got to win. Wow. He says that's the way it is. The rest of the field are well bunched, with the exception of D Day Dodger, who's somewhere behind the rest of the field. Oh. Strike him stiff, racing together. Woolly back, tea cake, and strike him stiff. Woolly back by a length from tea cake. Strike him stiff, half a length in third. Copyright moving into fourth. The rest of the field bunched up behind with D Day Dodger still bringing up the rear. They've gone out of sight. No chance. It's not over yet. We'll pick him no up chance. What made you pick D Day Dodger anyway? Coming an argument, Arrows. Oh, you're mean. It makes no difference to you if it wins. Of course it does. If it wins, I have to pay them ten grand. I only break even. If it loses, I pay them nothing. I still get over three grand off the other bet. That's not very fair. I'll be able to, Jean. Nothing's ever fair. Leave it. Back into view, and D-Day Dodger has come right through to take it up. What? Oh. the second burst, and D-Day Dodger takes it. Five, six, Come on, seven, clear to the field. Strike him stiff, moving into second. Tea cake in third. Woolly back, dropping right back. D-Day Dodger, ten lengths clear. D-Day Dodger, ten lengths clear. He's only got to jump the last to win. D-Day Dodger, fifteen lengths clear of Strike him stiff. Tea cakes, five lengths away in third. Woolly back, weakening very badly. But it's D-Day oh, Dodger, yeah. well clear. Twenty lengths clear. He's never won a race in his life, and has to go and win this one. Ball. Ball. Fallen. Fallen. D-Day Dodger. Copyright. Woolly back, TK, can strike him stiff. Woolly back from TK. Copyright into four. Jockey draws like that, you need a kamikaze pilot. What made you pick it, for God's sake? Ralph picked it. I only pointed it out to you, Edna. Ralph picked it? How many more did you pick? None. Do you mean to say she picked five winners, you put your nose in and picked a loser? It wasn't really like that, Harry. Come on, hand over. What? You've cost us £10,000. Come on, give us it. Oh, don't be stupid, Harry. It's her that's stupid listening to you. The last time you picked a winner, it was Golden Miller. You're a bloody Jonah. So you're not going to cancel it this time, then? No, it's lovely. Where do I sign? How about inside? Oh, look who has. Damon, no. Anyone. Damon, you can carry on about it all night, lad. The answer will still be no. I'm getting someone in to do it. Oh, they'll charge you the eighth. No, they won't. Ten quid an hour. Yeah, 25 bob a roll. It cost me about nine quid. Oh, why, well, yeah. And who's gonna do it for nine quid? There's loads of fellas advertising on the paper. Ha! <laughs> You're joking, aren't you? They're cowboys. They're on the dole, doing it on the side. Good luck to them. They're only cut round there. He's sockets and everything. Oh, yeah. Do them dishes. Oh, where are you going? Nose.
<laughs> this is a recurring dream, Heather. What is? You making me coffee. We shall drink the coffee, chat. I shall try to get friendly. And you'll send me on my way. There you go again. What? Assuming things. I'm wrong to assume you'll send me on my way? It's tea. That's a really good job, eh? See? Can I do it then? Yes, go on. Oh, it's our... <laughs> right. Now, it's going to take about seven rolls, and they're going to cost a fiver each. Oh, boy, this stuff. No, I'm not talking about the paper. Five pounds is the cost of me labour. What? Well, you can't expect me to do it for nothing. Damon, I don't even want it doing. It's your mother that wants it doing. You can't do a little job for your mother without wanting paying. Blimey, I feel sorry for you. Oh, well, look, this is wallpaper. It's not like doing the dishes. It's above and beyond the call of duty. So is picking up your dirty socks and taking a scrubbing brush to your underpants. It is about you, Heather. <sighs> you seem so choosy. <laughs> so just being chosen is as great a pleasure as the thing itself. Mm. Well, almost as great a pleasure as the thing itself. I have to go upstairs. Oh, well, we don't have to go anywhere. Mm. There's only seducing to be done. I'm gonna do it. I'll lead you by the hand and. Now, in old Hollywood movies, Clark Gable would have carried you up these. Clark Gable's got a lot to answer for. <laughs> oh, they'll go away. Be a neighbour. Do you want me to move? Why? Strange man on your stairs. Oh, we're getting something to talk about. <laughs> Heather Habersham. Yes. Are you on the way up or on the way down? I beg your pardon. If you're on the way up, I'm prepared to wait ten minutes. You're obviously quite desperate. Who do you think you are? His wife. I got your address from the showroom. I always know when my husband's having an affair. He starts doing press-ups each morning. Oh, for God's sake! Look, I'll have to go. Oh, not yet. This is some improvement on your last little bit on the side. I'm not his little bit on the side. Oh, no? Well, what would you call it? I didn't know he was still married. Did you ask? He said he was divorced. Oh, wishful thinking, love. Nice car outside. Payment for services rendered. We'll talk about this at home. Oh, damn right we will. I can understand you feeling hurt, but I honestly didn't know he was married. You can understand me feeling hurt? How magnanimous of you! I find my husband halfway up the stairs with a tart. A better class of tart than usual, admittedly, but a tart nonetheless. But never mind. She can understand me feeling hurt. All's right with the world. How long's this been going on? There's been nothing going on. Oh, come on. You were halfway up the stairs. Were you just going to flush the loo together? I'll take you home. I'll manage on my own. I'll admit we were going to bed. Oh, you do surprise me. For the first time. Now you amaze me. Look, please believe me. Nothing has ever happened before, nor will it ever. Well, I seem to have upset your little love nest, darling. God, I'm sorry. 30 press-ups a day. The sad thing is, such stamina without expertise. In all our marriage, he's never needed more than 20. I can explain. Don't. Don't. 
I mean, it's not a marriage. I mean, God knows what it is, but it, it, it's not... You said you were divorced. For all intents and purposes, we are. You lied! Lied? For you, I commit murder. Get out. Oh, for God's sake! What you were doing to her, my husband did to me. She was looking at me the way I looked at Roger's tart. You know what it feels like to talk to a woman who's been in bed with your husband and your husband standing next to her? You mustn't show your heart broken. Keep it civilised. Oh, so bloody civilised. You want to call her a scheming whore. You talk about the weather. And your eyes are looking daggers into hers as if just looking at it will make her fall to her knees and confess, but it doesn't. So you carry on talking about the weather while your guts are being wrenched apart. I'll never do that to anyone because I've had it done to me. It's not like that, Heather. Get out! Just give me ten minutes to explain. Get out! 